I wanted to understand uh, the role of nursery areas, uh, what nursery area areas consisted of for juvenile gadoids, specifically uh, commercially important Atlantic cod, haddock and whiting. With these three species and many other commercial species, they were an important fishery within the Firth of Clyde and around the west coast of Scotland. However, stocks declined for these three species and although measures have been put in place to try and recover these species, uh, no recovery to date has been seen. So there are a variety of papers uh, throughout the Atlantic uh, with different hypotheses, for example, uh, climate change, um, increasing seal populations, but what we saw within, um, within the west coast of Scotland and Europe is there's few studies that have looked at the role of habitat for these three species. Um, and in the USA, for example, you have the Essential Fish Habitat Act um, looking to protect the habitat of these species where they live, but we have no such things um, in Europe. So first of all, I did a literature review, like in most PhDs, uh, looking at the background information, what studies had been undertaken in other areas. Um, so uh, crashes in cod stocks has occurred uh, to the west of the Atlantic as well. And then I sort of had a look at what existing information was, and what I saw was most studies have just looked at seabed type, how that affects cod, and there's fewer studies that have looked at um, haddock and whiting. Um, I didn't even know when I started to collect data whether I'd actually see any cod given stocks were so low. And also there was the Mike uh, Heath and Spears paper that was out saying that there's a lot of juvenile whiting but not so much of the other species. I also wanted to see what interactions might be occurring there as well. Most uh, research had used a, a lot of trawl data, seine nets, but few, um, re there wasn't much research that had used video imagery um, in temperate waters and although used in more tropical waters and in Australia, um, hadn't really been done over here so I wanted to focus on use of imageries and we managed to get ourselves some funding to use uh, stereo video, video imagery and the cool thing with the stereo video imagery is that you can actually get length measurements as well, which is and 3D measurements. So that was an interesting aspect of the research as well. Because rather than getting um, abundance, just abundance me measurements, you can get um, size, look at size differences over a period of time that you collected data. So I collected my data from the beginning of June when these gadoids arrive at coastal areas to the end of September before the weather turned bad, um, where they're meant to occupy these nursery habitats um, and be able to see whether there was any length differences. So we saw quite a few differences between the three different species, particularly um, differences between cod and then haddock and whiting being a little bit more similar. Uh, firstly, regarding um, the habitat, what we saw was um, cod were more associated and higher relative abundance were observed in uh, gravel habitats containing various percentages of mill, also some seagrass areas on general relatively more structurally with ghost areas whereas haddock and whiting were observed in areas of um, uh, sand and mud and more homogeneous areas. Uh, I undertook a model as well and saw that, looked at landscape effects and we found that um, cod preferred more heterogeneous uh, seabed types rather than homogeneous like uh, haddock and whiting. But we also saw some similarities where all three species uh, were seen in higher relative abundance in areas of higher benthic and demersal fish biodiversity um, and more sheltered areas. Um, haddock and whiting were also seen in deeper areas as opposed to cod in shallower areas. Regarding the length measurements, what we saw was an average uh, haddock and whiting were larger than that of carp cod. They probably arrived to these coastal areas earlier which puts cod at a competitive disadvantage since um, gadoids are cannibalistic um, and so being smaller in size they're probably more vulnerable to predators and other gadoids. But over the period that I collected data we did see an increase in size and we saw um, ontogenetic shifts in all three species. For cod what we saw was they shifted to more complex or rugose substrata as they grow in size, whereas for haddock and whiting they moved to deeper waters as they grow in size. Regarding the management of these three species, it actually works out to be quite complex because 
although we wanted to see whether designated MPAs could have a role for the protection of these three species, the three species require different things. So for cod, for example, for management, uh, the mill areas, gravel areas, seagrass areas could be important, could have a, almost a double badge for the protection of these seabed types, not only being vulnerable, but also providing potentially important habitats for cod. But for haddock and whiting, where they were seen in higher relative abundance in mud, it's a different story where these uh, area, mud areas and sandy areas might be more important to these species. The other thing for regarding protection measures was the heterogeneity. So for cod, heterogeneous uh, habitats or seabed types were important. So a variety of different seabed types might be important. Whereas for haddock and whiting, this isn't as crucial a factor. I think from the results of my research, what goes to show that um, designated protected areas could provide a role for the protection of fish. Um, we need to think a little bit more widely, not just protect vulnerable uh, seabed types such as mole or seagrass, but the variety of the different ones, the ex extent of the different uh, patches, how this could affect the fish, and also looked at wider different types of seabed types in, in a variety of different locations to ensure that there's connectivity going on. Because um, we also saw density dependence um, substratum association for cod, showing that um, where there might be not sufficient uh, seabed types, there might be a decrease in numbers, which is an important point to consider.